everyone. Welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. Today, we are at home yeah. because we're setting up our Christmas tree and we wanted to show you all the nerdtastic ornaments that we have. We have a lot of movie, a lot of Star Wars, a lot of Disney. We even have a droid tree dedicated to all the robots of cinema and Star Wars. So uh, come hang with us, hang with Pixel and Gizmo, and uh, we'll show you what Christmas is like at our home. Come with us on this adventure. We did it. By we, I mean you did it. This was hard. There's so many cords that you need to connect and so many like unnecessary extra ones that this took us like an hour. But we didn't think we were watching us. <laughs> Looks great. Does it really? Uh, yeah, looks big. Yeah, it's huge. Okay, all done. <laughs> we officially have our tree up. Now it's time for the ornaments, but I have a question for you guys out there. I'm wondering, you know, it is November 16th. Is it too early to put up a Christmas tree on New November 16th? When does Christmas begin? You know what, we normally do it a lot earlier than this. We're those type of people that, oh my God, I feel like we're gonna get so much hate for this, but we usually do it like a couple days after Halloween, if not like Halloween evening. I mean, that is how Disney does it. So, I mean, we live on the Disney calendar. Yeah, that's a good rule. Live by the Disney calendar. I think this year was like November 8th, technically. So we're a few days off, but yeah. In my opinion, it's not never too early. <laughs> We have a fake tree because we just don't want to go through the hassle of getting a real tree and dragging it all the way here. And also, it's better for the environment. So, Disney does it. We live our life by Disney. But I will say, one of the bad things about having a fake tree is you got to, like, put it together and spread all the branches out. And my arms are all, like, scratched up. You got scratches, too? <laughs> yeah. I just noticed that I have some, too. Like, it looks like a cat scratch. Wow. The things we do for Christmas. I know where we can start. We can start with the new ornaments for this year. Let's take a look at those. I got this from Hallmark Keepsake. It's a Harry Potter one. It's uh, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes Joke Shop. And I, what's cool about this one is actually in the back, you stick a one of the Christmas lights through it and it actually lights it up. I love that. The thing I like about that one is, yes, it's from a movie, it's from a book, but it's also from a theme park. We've been inside that at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we should say that this tree is all movie themed. If it's not in movies or television, it can't be on this tree. So we've made that rule. Uh, this year at Comic-Con, I got this exclusive Ewok on a speeder bike from Return of the Jedi. Uh, this is one of, I think, 3,500 and also got this this came out this year uh from hallmark it is a scout trooper a speeder bike and they both make their own noises look over there stop him go for help go oh, look at his little butt i love it should we put it by the other one yeah okay they're racing each other yeah i think He's in the lead, slightly. That's one of the hardest parts of putting your ornaments up. Like, where do you put them? Like, do you put the new ornaments in the front center so they're more visible? Or do you like, how do you do it? That's what I'm doing for now, but I know as like I keep unboxing, there's gonna be ones that I want front and center, so we're gonna have to like rearrange as we go. Yeah, you know, some of my friends actually have like a turntable that rotates slowly over the night so like you you all your ornaments get front and center attention uh, yeah we're not gonna do that <laughs> sorry <laughs> why do you not want all the ornaments to get their own place in the spotlight because it's like a death match it's cutthroat you either make it to the front of the tree or you make it to the back of the tree depending on how i feel it's 2019 and one of my favorite films of the year is Avengers Endgame. So I had to get Thanos. This is another Hallmark ornament. This is the version from Endgame, not Infinity War. And we also got from Hallmark a Y-Wing. And this is part of their Storyteller collection. If you ever wondered why it's called a Y-Wing? 
Why? I don't know. We got this ornament from Galaxy's Edge. It's a little, it's the Black Spire Outpost with the Millennium Falcon. I'm not really quite sure how this is, well, I guess Star Wars is movie related, so that's technically why we could have this on our tree. We found these at Target today. They're little mini mystery ornaments. We decided to get Star Wars, but they also had Harry Potter, Disney Princesses, and Marvel. And you could get one of these six characters. I'm really hoping to get the pork, so I bought three of them. <laughs> I'll be happy with any of them, as long as I don't get a duplicate. So let's go ahead and open them up. This is gonna be a problem. Kitra loves mystery box things. And if she doesn't get the pork, she's just gonna keep on going back. They're only $4. So that's why I got three. So I was like, you know what? I'm willing to spend $12 on this. And uh, fingers crossed we get that porg. Woo! I noticed that these are series one. So that gives me hope that each year we'll have new ones. Oh, pfft. I saw a picture of the porg on here, but it's not. It uh, looks like, okay, not mad at it. Like I said, I'm happy with all of them. We got Darth Vader. I love how cute and small it is. Okay, so. Darth Vader, we got two more to open. This isn't a fork, I can't tell. Wait, is this a fork? No, oh, okay, I like this one. We got Chewie. Chewie's a cute one. He was my number two besides the pork. He's so cute, look at his face. This really is gonna be a problem. We all know that I love cute things. I want, now I'm like, why didn't I get any of the Harry Potter ones? We gotta go back like tomorrow and get more, I think. Okay, it's the moment of truth. What do you guys think? Do you think I'm gonna be lucky? Not a poor. It's not Chewbacca. It's Han Solo! He's cute too! I got three different ones. That I feel like is a win, right? But we still gotta get that pork. Honestly, I was hoping to get three porgs so I could have like three porgs in the like all next to each other on the tree. That would be pretty awesome. <laughs> no? <laughs> So I got the black Kyber challenge. Maybe we got to start the Kitra brown porg challenge. You want to see that? Leave, leave it in the comments <laughs> Wait, below. I was like the brown porg. Well, it's, it. it's brown. Yeah, right? I know. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we want to see that. That seems like I'll be spending a lot less money to get it, hopefully, than you. <laughs> Just one of our boxes of ornaments. We're probably not gonna go ornament by ornament, but we'll show you some of our favorites. It's funny because as we're taking these out and hanging them on this tree, we're having discussions with each other, figuring out which ones are worthy to show you. And I think this one is. This is ET from 2012 Hallmark. And I love it because we have a life-size ET. And also this is another one of those ones where you could stick the Christmas light up in the bottom and it makes his heart Low. I think my favorite ornaments are all gonna be Star Wars ornaments, but we're gonna start off first with this 2011 Hallmark ornament, Showdown at the Cantina. You might remember a couple videos back, that was me facing off against Greedo in the famous Cantina battle. Uh, and this is just awesome, and it actually makes noises. You can press that and it'll like go through the scene from the movie. Our tree has a setting where it rotates between colored lights and just white lights, or we could put it on either or. I'm just wondering, what do you guys think? Like, what do you like better? Do you like the colored lights? Do you like the white lights? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. This is another Harry Potter ornament, just like the Weasley Weezes one, but this one is Gringotts Bank, and it's another one of those ones where you stick the light in the back and it lights up. The only thing I wish, I wish it like shot fire like it does in Diagon Alley in Universal Orlando. That'd be so cool. You know, like one of the number one causes of house fires are Christmas trees. Like that would be a horrible idea, bad idea. I'm willing to take that risk. Are you? Another one of my favorite ornaments I got last year, I think, and it's a Donkey Kong arcade machine. Don wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Donkey Kong, is that a movie? The King of Kong is a documentary all about Donkey Kong, so technically, technically is a movie. Although Donkey Kong, arcade, I actually have an arcade machine upstairs, and it's, it's one of my favorite old school games, but yes. I think it's, it's a prop in a movie. The coolest thing about this is if you press the button, it actually like, does a startup sequence and does the, the noises from the game. I do not like the cone of shame. Hi there, my name is Doug. I have just met you and I love you. I am a great tracker. Set me on a special mission all by myself. 
It's kind of funny that Hallmark is now doing those blind bag ornaments because I'm an ornament collector and I, there's a lot of movies that they don't make ornaments for. And a few years back, I decided to make my own. And what I did is I'd buy like a Funko blind bag. This was a keychain, and I'd make it into an ornament. So I have that, I have the guy from Tron, I have Carl and Russell from Up, and they're all like just keychains that we made into ornaments. So be uh, crafty. Speaking of being crafty, we don't actually have a tree topper. And we found this little rafter at, I think, a flea market when me and Peter first started dating. And ever since then, it's been our tree topper. It fits like perfectly right on top. That was never our intention. I don't even know why I bought this, but it's, I think it's a pretty awesome tree topper. All right. Peter, what do you think? The point is, they're alive when they start eating. Oh no. So, so show a little respect. <laughs> Speaking of handmade ornaments, we took a gremlins figure, hung some twine from him, and voila, you get a gremlins ornament. These two I love so much. I got them at Disneyland last year, I believe. They had a whole collection that was a bunch of different characters in this style. And I know these aren't like super exciting, but I just think they're so adorable. You may be thinking that we're showing you like so many, but believe me, we're not showing you like, I'd say 90% of them. They, we just keep pulling them out of the bucket. Every year I forget how many ornaments we actually have. This ornament right here doesn't look as cool as the others, but this got sent to me by Leica Animation Studios. Uh, the studio that brought you Coraline and Paranorman uh, and Kubo. And I just love, it's like metal. I, I think they probably printed it off of a 3D uh, metal printer at their workshop. It's pretty cool. Oh, what happened? One of our ornaments broke and I'm trying to fix it because I love this one. I think I may have fixed it, but lesson be learned. Don't just throw your ornaments in a bag. You should probably properly. Yeah, Peter. These are teeny tiny Hallmark ornaments from 1999 and 1998. We have the Max Rebo band, which I absolutely love. And then we have a trio of Ewoks. They're so small and adorable. I love them so much. I feel like you can't really tell how small they are, so here's my hand for scale. They're like as big as a, like a quarter. Hey, little baby. This is a, a cool ornament. This is something I got at the Disney store a few years ago. This is a sketchbook ornament, and it's Walt Disney from 1923 when he first arrived in Hollywood with only 40 or 60 bucks in his pocket, something like that. He arrived with a suitcase and a dream, Peter. A suitcase and a dream. But I like this in, in the old timey camera. This is another Hallmark one. And what I love about this one is it's the Simpsons, obviously. And it's one of the coolest Simpsons ones that I've been able to find. And trust me, I look every year. Watching the Itchy and Scratchy yeah. show. Wait for it, wait for it. Not impressed. <laughs> I have a bunch of Indiana Jones ornaments, but this one from 2009 of Raiders of the Lost Ark of Indy stealing the fertil fertility idol. It might be my favorite of all of them. And the, the cool thing about it is you can press the button, and it plays John Williams' iconic theme. YouTube, please do not demonetize this video. This is another one of my favorites. It's obviously Jabba. Return of the Jedi is my favorite movie, and I love this scene. It's iconic. And the only thing that's missing from this is a little salacious crumb, but I actually found this. I have this salacious crumb Lego, and I was thinking I could, like, somehow tape this on here. Like, doesn't that, like, it's sitting, it looks perfect. And who got you that Lego Salacious Crown? You did! It's one of my first gifts. Yeah, I don't know, it's so random. I think we were, like, at a convention and somebody was selling this, like a- Our first date was at Star Wars Celebration, yeah. and then we went to Disneyland. 
beat that. Yeah, maybe I saw this during that and I was like, oh, I love it. And then he bought it on eBay for me as a surprise and it's been sitting next to my bed ever since. And now I'm like, we could put it on the ornament. Everything came full circle. Another one of my favorite ornaments is this one from Star Wars A New Hope. It is Obi-Wan Kenobi showing Luke Skywalker a lightsaber for the first time. The thing I like about this is just so detailed. It looks like a diorama of that scene. It's just so cool. I'm not sure if you guys know this, but I love Han Solo and Carbonite. I actually have a life-size one right there. And of course, I have one as a Hallmark ornament. There he is. Not with Boba Fett, but it's cool nonetheless. I can't see. Your eyesight will return in time. Where am I? Jabba's palace. Who are you? Someone who loves you. Where? I think in a past video, I told you about my droid shelf. We have a droid problem here. We love droids. So we have this shelf of droids from not just the Star Wars movies, but all of cinema. And of course, because we're buying lots of ornaments, we also do the same thing with the ornaments. So what we decided to do is make ourselves a droid tree. And just like the droid shelf, we have droids from Star Wars, we have the Iron Giant, we have Wall-E, we have Rosie from the Jetsons, we have HAL 9000 from 2001 A Space Odyssey. There's just tons of droids from all over cinema, and we love it. I love our droid tree so much, but it's so small. I feel like it's one of those ones that I do wish rotated because we have so many in the back that you can't see. I think eventually we're gonna need to upgrade to a bigger tree, but it's so fun. Do you think we're the only people in the world that have a droid tree, or do you think there's other people? Right? Oh, and speaking of the droid tree, there is one more set of ornaments that I didn't get to mention earlier that I wanted to show you guys because they're just super cool. And that is, these came from Comic-Con. They are the exclusive Ralph McQuarrie concept designs for R2-D2 and C-3PO. And basically this is what concept designer Ralph McQuarrie thought that R2 and C-3PO were going to look like when he was designing A New Hope for George Lucas. And uh, they were a Comic-Con exclusive. They look super cool, and I'm gonna be happy to put these as new additions to the droid tree. Uh oh, where are you gonna put them? I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move Rudolph the R2 reindeer no! to the back. He's been banished to the back. It's been fun, Rudolph R2, but your new home is in the back of the tree. We're gonna put these guys in front here somewhere. They gotta get space in the spotlights. I should mention, my mom made some of these ornaments for us because she knows that we're crazy Star Wars people. She made this BB-8, and she also made an R2. We just hit 35,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, and my mind is blown. That's like, insane. Thank you guys so much. Subscribing, liking, hitting that bell, all that stuff really, really helps us, and we appreciate it so much. Yeah, and we love, last time we were at Disneyland, we ran into dozens of you ordinary adventurers. It means so much to us. We Today at Target, we ran into two people. Yeah. I, I, it just makes us feel so special. And I want to say thank you to everybody out there. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And we'll see, you see you on, on the next, next adventure. adventure.